In this video, we'll talk about T cell activation. Welcome to Handwritten Biology, where we draw it to know it. So T cell activation happens in the lymph nodes. But before that, we should have a quick recap of T cell development. T cells are born in the bone marrow from the hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell. Hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell actually give rise to lymphoid progenitor, which eventually produce a immature precursor T cell. After it is born in the bone marrow, it moves to the thymus. It's the training school for T cells. Thymus leads to production of T cells, which are mature. They learn all the techniques to recognize peptides from MHC but still they haven't encountered antigens. That means they are still naive. They have the training, but they really didn't handle real life scenarios. These are naive T cells. From the thymus, naive T cells goes to lymph node. And this is where the action begins. So all the events of T cell activation is actually happening in the lymph node. Now let's talk about the T cell activation. One of the key player that helps in T cell activation is the antigen presenting cell. For example, the dendritic cell. In this case, the dendritic cell has engulfed some pathogens, in this case, some bacteria. And now this dendritic cell would display some of its peptides onto class two MHC molecule. So the dendritic cell displays all some of the peptides in class two MHC molecule. Now the T cell, which is naive, which has the T cell receptor would recognize this class two MHC bound peptide. So TCR and MHC complex mediated interaction give rise to the signal one for T cell activation. Also these dendritic cells express CD8086, which binds to CD28 on the T cells. This is the second interaction giving rise to the signal for the T cell activation. Ultimately, T cell also secretes interleukin 2, which in an autocrine fashion binds to the interleukin 2 receptor and give rise to the signal 3 of the activation. So this worked like a combination lock. You need three digits to be aligned properly for that lock to open. Here, all these three signals has to be there for the activation of the T cells. If all of these signals are together, then what happens? T cell gets activated. So the second signal was the CD80 and CD86 and CD28 interaction. And the third one is the autocrine signaling by IL2 receptors. So if any one of these signal is not present, then the activation would not happen optimally. So overall, what we learned that T cell activation requires three signal. This is the take home message. But question is how it is clinically relevant in subsequent videos, you would understand that because many aspects of T cell activation are associated with autoimmune disorder. So if someone can tamper around with basic signaling pathway, they might have a solution for these uh, autoimmune disorders. In subsequent videos, we would learn about it. So T cell activation takes place in the lymph node, which is another piece of information which we have to understand. Now lymph node has efferent and efferent lymphatics. I mean, efferent means exit, afferent means entry point. So all the dendritic cell recognize the pathogen in the periphery and they migrate to the lymph node, enter the lymph node where T cells are physically located. Now inside the lymph node, there are dedicated areas for T cell and the B cell. Knife cell, uh, knife T cell and the D uh, dendritic cell interaction happens in the lymph node. That lead to activation of the T cells now, once the T cells are activated, they would rapidly proliferate and divide and increase their number. So they would clonally expand. This is known as clonal expansion. And this is an important phenomena in the, in the process of T cell activation. Eventually, based on what type of pathogen was there, what type of cytokine signaling is available, these particular T cell can become Th1 subtype or Th2 subtype or even Th17, T regulatory, etc. In a separate video, we are going to focus on each of them. And each of them has their own function. All of them has one thing in common. They have the CD4 re receptor. So in summary, T cell activation requires three signals, which we talked about. You can take a quick screenshot of this 
and it would be useful for you i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe so these are the three important points that we covered the signal one the signal two and the signal three for t cell activation so take home message is justified t cell activation requires three signals and don't forget to subscribe to our channel see you in next video